Okay, today I'd like to follow up on a um, on the last video that I posted, which had to do with liberty being connected with one's capacity for suffering and to be able to suffer well. What does it mean to suffer well? It means to be able to endure the wrongly the wrongs of others without returning like for like. So not returning ill for ill. So why is this a key in maintaining and obtaining and maintaining one's liberty? The reason is because if your liberty is predicated upon the observance of others, of their acknowledging a particular right or privilege, that's not freedom, <laughs> in case you haven't noticed. It's easy to see because we say that we live in a free country. Um, well, and I, I forget that this is, this is worldwide, so I don't know where you're coming from, but if you're coming from a free country, consider those liberties and blessings that you have, which are actually granted to you by government. Those are a real blessing. Um, but the likelihood is there have been times when there are laws, statutes that are enacted, which you feel infringe upon your liberties. Now, the interesting thing about this is that you discover that you're in this terrible place. Here I was, I thought that I was free, and now I discover that at the whim of others, or the vote of others, or the... Um, at the choice of others, I now discover that I am prevented from exercising my rights. Now, when this is the case, when you are um, prevented from exercising your rights, what, I'm trying to set in a way that you can see me, um, what is your recourse? Or are you now in a situation where you must live in bondage? Well, outwardly, yes. But I would like you to consider, is it possible that what we have considered to be freedom, those things which we have considered to be freedoms were in reality privileges? If my freedom is dependent upon someone else acknowledging my right to a particular privilege, am I really free? I would say no, because in the moment that that person decides or that entity, that government, that institution, in the moment that they decide 
that a particular privilege or a particular right is no longer your right, well then, you're no longer free. Whereas, if I consider that I am free, if I can choose, that changes everything. If I am free, if I can choose. And if no one chooses for me, then I am free. Now I choose for no one else. To infringe on somebody else's agency implies, yet again, that you need someone else to buy in with you in order to be free. So the idea that I have to get anybody else to do anything implies I've lost freedom. But if I can choose to do what I deem to be right, then I am free. But if I can't choose to do what I deem to be right, then I have lost my freedom. If, for example, I'm in a situation with a friend or a, a family member and I know that a particular course of action is right, not for them, but for me. If I know that the right thing is to do a particular, to, to say, for example, act in a particular way, I think in the most basic sense, we could consider this um, just often, basic authenticity. So I am going to be me. I'm going to be just like I am, good or bad. Um, but I'm, I may have faults, I may have failings, but you know, I'm going to present myself to my friends and my family exactly as I am. And if I'm able to choose to do that, then I'm free. But if I find myself presenting myself in a way other than my authentic self, if I find myself pretending, if I find myself bending over backwards to try to appease or to be um, other than I really am, if I find myself playing into the game of hypocrisy, wherein I may not be all that I should be, but I'll pretend to be, and then I'll be somebody else behind closed doors, then I'm not really free. But If I can be true, true to who I am today, it's not to say I'll be the same man today as I will be tomorrow. I may be a better man tomorrow. I may have more to give. I may have less um, deception and falsehood to, to carry along with me tomorrow. But if I can be true, even in the face of rejection by loved ones, then I'm free. On grander scales, we see that societies are only maintained this way, and it is a joke to pretend that you can have freedom through legislation. That is not the case. You cannot have freedom through legislation. We've seen how long that's lasted. We were given a constitutional republic a couple hundred years ago. 
here in the United States. I have to remind myself that there's people from other countries. And um, you can see that almost immediately that falls apart. It unravels piece by piece. It can be legislated to some degree, but it can only be maintained wherein there are citizens who are willing to suffer. Henry David Thoreau had it right, we discover, when he spent a night in the jail because he couldn't support a particular law, a particular tax. And so, and he makes the point in there that, um, that when the people decide, no, um, I'm not going to obey wherein you're doing something wrong, wherein your legislation violates the very core of my conscience. This doesn't mean to say that we go to battle over every single point. But each of us has a particular calling in life. If you've been called to the path of truth, then you will discover that you have your own battles to fight, whatever they may be, and that it will have to begin by a resolution to do what's right in your particular case and upon the battle lines of your own life. And, and the amazing thing that we discover is that we discover it's really a battle for our own bodies. A man who can master his own tongue or a woman her tongue to say no thing which she believes to be untrue to act in no way in which she believes to be false. That's a free man or a free woman. And un, uh, unavoidably, if we choose to be authentic, if we choose to be true, if we choose to choose for ourselves what we feel is right, inevitably we will face opposition. There will be those who will say, I find fault with you doing what you feel is right. There may be those who have had dominion over your own body. They've been able to get you to say things you didn't mean, to do things you didn't intend to do, to argue perhaps, when you didn't want to argue. And when you stop, they will be angry that they can no longer control your tongue. There may be certain societal norms which you've agreed to just because it's what everybody did. But you'll come to a realization that certain things that everyone does, down to a man or a woman, or so it appears in your life, in your society, you may discover and, and come to the realization that Many of the things that they do, that everyone does, are wrong and that you can't do them anymore. And when you do, when all of a sudden you stick out like a sore thumb in society, 
there will be those who will turn away from you, who may even revile you and persecute you and say all sorts of nasty stuff against you falsely. But if you can suffer well, if you can refrain from returning like for like, there will grow in you a love that they cannot understand. True love, that greatest of loves, God-like love, the kind of thing that Jesus talked about when he was on the earth. That kind of love can only be had when you are in the face of being done wrong by. Because it's only then that you have a chance to shut your mouth and set your face as flint To be able to choose, to be able to choose is freedom. And it's maintained by suffering. What would happen if there were a nation of people who would not support unjust laws. Not that they got up in arms. Not that they ran around with banners and billboards saying, believe how I believe. But they just refused to obey when to obey violated their conscience. then the powers of darkness could have no sway upon such a people. So, what happens if you desire to learn to suffer? You desire to learn or to gain control over your own body again. What if you desire to do so but you can't? You've tried. Then ask. And you don't even need to know that to which you ask. There is a power that lies in the realm of the unknown. And I don't care who you are or what belief structure you claim. You don't know it completely. And it's unknown to some degree to even you. So we can lay, leave off pretense here. And we can leave off claiming to know the unknown. But there is a power that waits and that listens. There is a power waiting to infuse a people who will act by the best they know. We may be all be in different parts of the wilderness we may have to come from different, far lands. And I don't mean a journey of walking or riding or flying, but a journey of the soul. We may be in far distant places. But that power will bring us to be one in one thing. wherein we are true 
to that which it makes of us. To that which it has made of us today. And in that we will be one, though we look as different as any creatures of different sorts that you can find in any wild jungle. We will be one wherein we are true and wherein we are faithful to that voice and power that has risen within us to make us capable capable of being free. Free to choose in the face of all of whatever hell there may be, whether it be on earth, in men, in ourselves, or in the darkest places of the unseen. So I wanted to share today a little bit about what I was talking about when I said that liberty is ultimately only obtained and maintained in one's ability to suffer and to suffer well. You know, and I suppose one last thought, um, you know, I said just a moment ago that the freedom lies in the ability to choose. But, any, but there's a reason why I said ultimate liberty resides in one's ability to suffer and suffer well. I said that because anybody can choose <laughs> when the choice is easy. That's not freedom. Anybody can choose when they're not faced with the opposition of the crowd. Anybody can choose when they don't face ostracism from their family or friends. But only the free can choose when it means they will have to pay a price. God bless you all, wherever you may be, whatever walks of life you may be. I guess that's all for tonight. <laughs>